of my favorite laptops last year was the Huawei MateBook X Pro. It was sleek looking, had like premium feeling materials, the specs were decent, um, and the price was great. But now here at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, I'm excited about the sequel. This is the Huawei MateBook X Pro 2019. And Huawei gave me some time with it, so I figured I'd try to do a complete walkthrough on it for you guys. Now, if you're not familiar, a walkthrough on this channel is where I try to go through every feature I possibly can on a new device so that you guys are better informed should you be in the market to go get one yourself. And with that said, there is a lot to go through. So let's get started with the styling. So just like last year, we have a unibody metal design, but the logo has been toned down from the name Huawei and the peacock flower thing to just the name Huawei, which I think looks cleaner, frankly. Also, like last year, it'll come in mystic silver or space gray. On the other side of the lid, we have a 13.9 inch 3000 by 2000 three to two aspect ratio touchscreen that can apparently achieve an improved 450 nits of brightness and 1500 to one contrast ratio. We also have some seriously tiny bezels, giving it a 91% screen to body ratio. To achieve this though, Huawei again moved the webcam from above the screen to a hidden location inside a pop-up key in the keyboard. I praised this last year for the fact that Huawei was at least innovating. It helped with privacy concerns for those that covered their webcam with a sticker, and it made the screen look impressive. But the fact is that it's a very unflattering view for any type of video calling or live streaming that you'd plan to do. And since it isn't on the lid, it can't even be adjusted, especially when you're looking at the screen and not at the camera. And here's what the webcam looks like and the microphones sound like. Which brings us to the keyboard. It's super clicky and it feels great to type on, frankly. The backlights and the keys are bright and apparently Huawei told me that it's spill proof. So if you knock over that cup of coffee, it won't kill it. On either side of that keyboard, we have four speakers that are Dolby Atmos capable, and here is what they sound like. Show off. I could have just peed on it. In this trident resides the power of Atlantis. Above the right speakers, we have a power button that doubles as a fingerprint sensor for Windows Hello to log in to the computer. For ports, we have a USB-C port that is Thunderbolt 3 capable, so you can plug it into an eGPU or use Thunderbolt 3 devices. We have another USB-C port, one USB 3.0 Type-A port, and a 3.5mm audio jack. As for specs, we have a choice between the 8th gen Intel i7-8565U or the i5-8265U processor, the choice of 8 or 16 gigs of RAM, 256, 512, or one terabyte NVMe PCIe SSD, and the new NVIDIA MX250 GPU with two gigs of GDR5 memory. So thanks to that discrete GPU, like the last year's model, it should be able to handle my 4K video editing so long as there aren't a lot of graphics and animations, and yet have better battery life than the more powerful laptops I sometimes use for editing. We'll have to see how it does though against the Razer Blade Stealth 2019 that I currently use though. Subscribe and ding the bell next to the word subscribe to be notified of new videos like that when I do them. For connectivity, we have 802.11ac with 2x2 MIMO, which means it has more antennas and it can theoretically reach 1,733 megabits per second in 5 gigahertz. We also have Bluetooth 5.0 on board as well. For power, we have a 57.4 watt hour battery that can be charged via the USB-C ports using the 65 watt charger. By the way, airplanes usually have a 70 watt limit. So for someone like me that travels a lot, it's really important that the charger for my laptop is below that. Cause that means that while on the plane, I can actually plug it in without the outlet basically turning itself off like it does with say like my Razer Blade 15 or a more powerful machine. That charger can also power your USB-C phone as it supports power delivery protocols. So you could just use one charger for any USB-C device. For software, it's running Windows 10 as we're used to it. But this year, Huawei added a few tricks of their own to it. Firstly, they've added gestures like three fingers swiping down from off the top of the screen and that allows you to take screenshots. Next, they added some features exclusively for people using Huawei phones. How very Apple-esque of them. You can use Huawei Share 3.0 on your phone and this laptop to tap the NFC tag to the right of the keyboard and instantly share photos from the phone to the laptop, which is actually pretty cool. You can also use cross device copy and paste and even use the phone to start a screen recording on the computer, which is then automatically saved to the phone when you stop recording for easy sharing. Now overall, I feel like it's a solid incremental upgrade to last year's model, but I'm okay with that really, mainly because I still think that last year's model is competitive right now. 
It's sleek, performance is going to be not crazy fast, but the fact that it is an ultra portable essentially, it's more than you'd get from most in this range. And if it starts at the same $1,500 or so like the last year's model did, then I personally would have a hard time being able to suggest any other laptop that'll give you this much for that price. Now follow me on Twitter for pricing and availability. As soon as that is announced, I will post it there. Also, if you like this video, please thumbs up it or share it. It's greatly appreciated. And let me know in the comments below what you think of the laptop. And check out the link below to be taken to my newly relaunched blog where I do tech news, tips and tricks, other stuff that just doesn't necessarily make it here to video. And you can also subscribe to the weekly newsletter there that just goes out once a week and keeps you up to date on all the videos I do and articles and all that other fun stuff, if that's something you're into. As always though, regardless, thanks for watching.